Take me back, take me back. Take me back, take me back. When I take a drive through the old hood, same streets where. What is up, everybody? I hope everybody's having a great day. My name is Travis. This is the Most Important Things Podcast. I'm joined today by my fellow co-host, singer-songwriter, Bobby AGT. How are hey, we doing today, Bobby? I'm doing well, man. So happy to be here with you. All right. That's good. Good day. Uh, what? That, was that a bad cut? Do you want to start uh, over or something? There? No, no. That sounded good, but I think... Uh, hey, dude. Sketchy. I mean, you better not replace me. I yeah. would never consider it. I mean, I drive an hour to come here. If I, you better not replace me. I yeah. would never consider it. I mean, I drive an hour to come. You better not replace me. I would never consider it. I mean, I drive an hour to come here. Oh, I thought Travis was gonna take my spot. I mean, I drive an hour to come here. You better not replace me. I would never. You better not replace me. I would never. What is up, everybody? I hope everyone's having a great day today. We are here on the Most Important Things podcast, episode number seven, with my co-host, Bobby AGT, and also myself, Kevin Barbers. But Bobby AGT, hey. how you doing, my friend? Doing well, buddy. So happy to be here with you on this muggy Monday. Mm. It's cold and chilly, but it's where we live. Hey, we're here. So happy to be here. Happy to be here. Um, first well. things first, let's talk about our official sponsors. Why don't you go ahead and... Uh Official sponsors, Smith Anchor Apparel, Robert D. Smith and his wife Stephanie. For all your customized and personalized apparel needs, please give them a call. Please shoot them a message on Facebook or give me the memo and I will get you in contact with them and uh, and we'll get you something made. Bobby, we also have a second sponsor. I know, yeah. We're actually also brought to you guys by Brandis Beard Co. Uh, for those who don't know, Travis Gordon, the man who runs this beautiful studio that we operate out of, also has a men's grooming line where they focus on uh, beard oil, beard bombs, they make hand sanitizer. They do it all, really. Um, so check out Brandis Beard Co. You can reach out to either me or Kevin um, or even Travis if you want to uh, get your hands on some. One more thing about Travis. Um, this, as they know, we shoot this on Monday. And it comes out sometime Tuesday or the latest early Wednesday. Yeah. Travis is actually going to be on my live Instagram chat that I've been starting. Uh, he will be on Wednesday at 6 o'clock starting the show. If you want to learn more about the, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, check it out. Yeah. Let's talk about your Instagram live. Yeah, man. I would love to, Bobby. Yeah. I would love to, um, you know. I love doing this podcast, Bobby. Yeah. I love doing it with you. I love doing it with Travis. I love everything around that that this consists this uh, constitutes of, you know, everything we're trying to do. But I mean, I can only make it up here, or we can only make this happen one day a week on Monday, and I try to get here as early as I can. Right. You know, there's a lot of work that goes into this, you know. But man, you know, I I I, I thought to myself, I said, you know what, I want to continue to talk to as many people as I can and give them a platform to speak. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have things on their mind that they want to say, but you need the right person to say it to, yeah. you know, and there's so many people in our lives that don't make us feel comfortable enough to tell them the things that are truly on our mind because yeah. we think we're going to be judged or, you know, we just, we already know how those people are and how they react to what we're going to say, Yeah. you know, because right. a lot of people in our lives are people that have been in our lives for a long time. So we need to... Um, you know, be comfortable with with saying what we really want to say. And it's hard to find those platforms in life. Yeah. So, like I said, I've created this platform on my Instagram. Um, so far, I did Thursday and Friday last week, mm -hmm. uh, 6 to 8. Um, I had all walks of life, Bobby. You yeah. tuned in. You saw, you know, I had... Man, let's go straight off the bat. I mean, people that deal with mental health problems. Yeah. You know, we have recovered addicts. We had musicians. We had my boy Manny Mendonca. Mm, uh, shout out to Manny. Shout out to Manny. You know, he, he thinks along the, along the, uh, the lines of us. He is a gamer. Uh, Prometheus Gaming on Facebook, if you want to check that out. Check it out. And, uh, man, we just, we're all growing out here. Yeah. You know, we are just all growing out here in life. And let's grow together. And the people that I feel like I am talking to, I feel like we are all growing within that conversation that we have. Yeah, yeah. It was really cool to witness. I, I, I had chimed in a couple times throughout the night while you were doing the live, and everybody who I happened to land on when I tuned in had something of value to bring. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they were telling their stories, but it, they, they were also their stories were like touching me, and like I was feeling super inspired by a lot of them. Oh, yeah. dude, there's so many great people that this world doesn't know. Yeah, you know, and I wanna. 
as much as I want to grow in this world, like I just said, I want us to all grow. Yeah. And um, and <laughs> I can't. It's a fun journey, my man. You yeah. know, it, it's gonna be great. We'll keep so, it up, man. Yeah. So how was your week, brother? It was good. Yeah. yeah. Stayed busy. Um, had a few gigs over the weekend. Mm. It was nice. Played outside. Last night, no, actually, we played inside last night, which is the first, and we played outside the day before, and it was a little chilly, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's unfortunately that's the way it is, you know, with with the uh, pandemic, they're being weird about where we can physically play. Yeah. Sometimes we can't play inside. They a lot of places would prefer us outside, and it's getting colder, so that's getting harder to do. Yeah. So we'll see. What I have a recommendation. Maybe when you're performing, right? I don't know. I've seen you once, and you're you're unbelievable, Thank man. You. Oh wow, unbelievable. Uh, singing and you know guitar. Uh, did you do most of the singing? Most of the singing, yeah. Oh, okay, because yeah. I feel like with a guitar, maybe you can pop or or sing and you can dance a little bit, and that keeps you a little warmer. Let's try, yeah. Try to wiggle and jiggle and yeah. feel the vibe. But yeah, yeah. I'm uh, we're tethered because we uh, we use in ear monitors, and they so we can hear ourselves. We can't hear through the speakers. Oh, and I can only go so far. Oh, I should, okay. I should probably just invest in some wireless monitors that way i can walk around and actually dance and you should crazy. i think you should man mm. hey, you really should because uh you know you're getting your it, it's an act it's an entertainment act you know it's more than just singing it's more than just you know guitaring you are an act my man you mm. are entertainment you are a show you know Try, man and that's Try. you know that's what we're all doing right? we're all yeah. putting on a show hell yeah you know well other than that i mean the week's been good um I think it's safe to say my seasonal depression is kicking in. Is it? Yeah. Oh man, what's know, going on? Typically, in your life, when it's nothing specific, it's just when the weather changes. Uh, all of a sudden, in my brain, the world is ending. No. You know, really. It's just the way it works, and and I mean, I've talked about it before. I I, I try my best to be mindful in every scenario, in every situation, every moment of life, and I'm fully aware that all of my anxieties and depressions are not necessarily real. There's nothing specific that's making me feel down yeah. other than just the, the cold weather and the waking up early to go to work and it being fucking negative 20 and like, you know, that stuff's starting to come back and that, that just typically gets to me. But mm -hmm. it's been a week of managing that and um, taking it day by day and just trying to get my head straight and get back onto my personal development and get my mind right and, you know, preparing for this week, this podcast and, yeah, I mean, well, we're, Bobby, we're here. I'm ready to do it. So. You know, you were there for me. You are there for me. I try. So I am going to be there for you. And uh, I'm going to always be there for you. Uh, you know, when you're feeling down or when these things happen, um, you know, we all go through different times in our life. We're all on different time spans, time frames, time lengths, time lapses, yep. time everything. So we all need to, you know, work into our partners or our neighbors time um, when we can. You know what I'm saying? Like make the balance of my, 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 like my good to your bad or your bad to my good, okay. you know, and the feelings of life that we are feeling, you know, we have to somehow manage that because man, if I'm, if let's say like on a good day, right, I'm a hundred and you're about like a 40, right? Cause if let's say that's, that's the number, right? Yeah. You're at a 40, that's 140, bro. You know, and, and I'm willing to give up my 30 to make that balance that we're both on the same level. You know, I never want to bring myself down lower than like the 50. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're at a 40 and I'm at 100, I'm going to break it down for everybody. You know, I'm going to split up everything that we can all, you know, enjoy this moment of life together. Because, mm. you know, it's funny because, you know, when I walked in here, I, I've got the sense that something was not, I don't want to say off, but just something was different. Oh, I try right? to hide it well, you know. Well, you know what's funny is I'm the kind of person that I feel like it's my fault when I see someone else suffering like that. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I just feel like there's something that I can do about it mm -hmm. to um, make them feel better. But I guess the reality of life is you're not always going to make everybody feel, you know, better. You know that you want to because yeah. we're all dealing with. And our like I said, that specifically seasonal depression specifically, and a lot of people suffer from it. And it's it's not any specific thing that's making me feel this way. You know, it's just like I just wake up and I'm in that mood, and I have to just actively try my best to to not be in that mood, that mood. But um, it actually brings me to like I want to talk about that specifically. If we yeah, could. of course. Um, because I know a lot of people self suffer from seasonal depression and just and just the seasons changing and it kind of throwing off the whole vibe. So I wrote down a list of things that maybe people watching can hear this and be able to recognize what they're experiencing and, and, and whether that actually constitute as seasonal depression. So some things I wrote down, um, low mood or a uh, loss of interest in things that usually excite you. Mm -hmm. um, so as much as I love doing this podcast, similar to you, episode two, 
I obviously wanted to come here and have a great time, but I was a little mm, this morning, like, ah, I don't really want to fucking do anything. Right. Like, you know, I had to pack up the kids and bring the kids with me earlier. They hung out here while we were prepping for the show and just things that I'm typically excited about, like playing the gigs this weekend. Yeah, it's my job. I love doing it, but I kind of coasted this weekend. I just wasn't fully there when I should have been. And yeah, I just lose excitement and things I'm typically super excited about. Um, just a lack of motivation in general is a big sign of seasonal depression. Um, changes in sleep patterns and changing of eating habits and stuff like that. You know, when I'm trying to stay on my healthy eating grind and then I hit up Taco Bell on the drive home from my gig last night, you know, that'll make me feel better. Right. doesn't make me feel better. It makes me feel like shit the next day. Yeah. Um, but those are some things that you can notice in your life to kind of help you navigate um, if you're feeling that way. And then some things to physically fight that are um, making sure you're treating your temple right. Mm. Feeding it, uh, exercise, proper rest, proper mm. sleep, stuff yeah. like that. That's very important. Um, having a good support system, having somebody you can talk to about this. And, hey, Bob. You know, yeah. and uh, that, that could be very helpful. Um, just anybody that you relate with and can get things off your chest, mm. I think is very helpful to surround yourself with. Yeah. Well, I know that, um, you know, you've came, you came across my page last year at, around this season, though. So around this season, Bobby AGT found my page. So I hope those videos that I put at that time, you know, helped you a little bit. And to just give you a little reminder, Bobby, the little, the the feng shui, a little bit of the video you went a little bit like this. What is up, everybody? I hope you're having a great day today. And let's have a good day. You are a champion. You are an ace. Go out there and dominate everything in your life that you can possibly do. I hope everyone has a great day today, and I'll talk to you soon. Double tap. I liked it. Nice. Thanks, man. Made me feel a lot better. I did? Yeah. Nice. Let's go. Let's, let's keep riding the momentum. That's the OG right? Kevin Barbers, you know? That's the that's what I signed up for. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. Well, but enough about me and my sadness. No, brother. This is where it's, uh, this is where it, this is our platform, brother. You know, like this is this is us in the world and whoever's listening wants to know what's going on with you because they want to see the best you, you know, and for them to uh, for you to be the best you, you got to express exactly how you're feeling. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's, and that's what I like about this. We can be transparent. We can, you know, I can look back on it. You, you, know, you, you reference episode two and three, you know, oh, yeah. from time to time. And uh, yeah, it's it's visually we're able to tell that something was a little off and maybe pick. People picked that up on me today as well, but brother, you know, it's a story. It is this a story. isn't permanent. Right. This is part of the story. Yeah. You need these chapters. Yeah. You need as much as it sucks. These chapters need to be here, because someday someone is going to look back on all of it and they're going to say, "Oh, this wasn't all. This wasn't what it is today." Yeah. He had to go through a lot of bullshit. Right. When Bobby Agt or a good time is you know touring the united states which i truly feel like that's the love you deserve because that's what you are good at and your people can feel the emotions that you feel and they're going to feel that through the music that you perform they're going to look back and say where did bobby agt come from yeah. he came from starting um starting his music uh career or music you know maybe it started off as a hobby yeah. right when we were little i was as you, when you were uh in high school or something that you mentioned on the first podcast yeah. And then it grew into you and AJ. Now you guys are doing skits. You guys, I mean, you guys are doing gigs and stuff. Right. And, uh, and 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 maybe it came to a little uh, like uh, plateau. But you guys are making money from it now. You guys are performing. Yeah. The pandemic doesn't help, but you guys are getting back into it. But this podcast is going to further that growth, my man. You know, you're not just Bobby Agt, the the co-host of the Most Important Things podcast. You're Bobby Agt, the father. The, the 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 son, the 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 husband. Holy Spirit. <laughs> I, I, was sorry. Uh, I was waiting for it. <laughs> that was good. That's, that's, me. <laughs> that's me. Amen. Uh, but I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Uh, thanks for making me uh, feel better. Yeah, good. Oh. I hope you Hell do. Yeah. Let the spirit live within, brother. Uh, uh, so what do you want to get into today? I, we got some guests. We got some. We do have guests. some guests coming up. We have uh, Saeed Awad is going to join us in about a half hour's time. He is fighting at Bellator this weekend in Mohegan uh, at Mohegan Sun in Uncastville, uh, Connecticut, Not and he's, he's fighting on the main card. He is Sweet. Uh, yeah he's fighting uh, Mandel Nalo, who is a top guy. Yeah, um, it's going to be a great fight. Mm. It is going to be a war. Saeed brings it. When you talk about a fighter. A fighter that overcomes things in their life, yeah. Saeed is one of them. Beast. And you know what? 
He's going to talk about that on the podcast, what he's been able to overcome to become the fighter and have the belief and the confidence and the motivation to do what he loves, and that's to fight. So that's going to be good. Um, After him, uh, 420, uh, well, there's no time here, but 4 o'clock after him, which is about an hour from now, we're going to have Miranda Maverick on on the Most Important Things podcast. She is fighting in a few weeks. Um, UFC 254. Ah, the Khabib versus Gaethje card. Yes. Ooh, that's a big platform. Yeah, yeah, huge platform. Um, she's coming off a win over Pearl Gonzalez in Invicta. So she is making her UFC debut. Hell yeah. And, uh, and she's looking good. I've been watching her training. Yeah, yeah. she's she's putting in the work. Mm. You know, and that you know, put in the work, you get results. Absolutely. And, you know, it's funny because I went to um, I went to my nutrition place this morning, and you know, he said, uh, he said, man, I want you to join our team. You know, my man Serge, my man Serge back there at Wicked Local Nutrition, owned by Lenar Jones of Wicked Local Nutrition, Easy Work Nutrition, as as well as Shock Troop Fitness. But Serge was like, yo. When are we going to get you in here, you know, on a consistent base and, and work out? I'm like, man, I'm like, you're going to get me and you're going to get me for life. You know, she's so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse, excuses. You know, you want results. You can't have excuses. You can't have both. So I'm like, that's a good point. I'm like, what'd you just say? He's like, yeah, excuses and results. You can't have both. I was like, all right. All right. So when's the next session? Wednesday, six o'clock. I'll see you at Wednesday, six o'clock. All right. For a circuit training. Sounds good, man. Yep. I look forward to talking about that. Yeah, that'll be next week's I'm gonna podcast. Be, uh, I'm going to actually double up. I'll be your uh, alarm clock. I'll make sure you get up on time. I'm going to need it because I know you'll be up because mm-hmm. I know you're always up, you know? I'm always up, bro. You're always up, you know? It's funny. Bobby asked Sleep me. is for the week. Just kidding. Sleep is very important. Please take your sleep serious. Well, you know what? It's sleep, is, sleep is not for the week. Sleep is for... Sleep is only for the week when it's a mindset. And I've been there. And I've been weak. And we've had weak times in our life. Um, sleep is more than an act of resetting. You know, sleep is more than an act of wet dreams. You know, sleep is a mindset. You know, <laughs> sleep is, um, you don't want to be sleepy with your mind. You know, we're sleeping to reset our bodies and our brains and also our minds. But when the sleep to action ratio is higher, mm-hmm. that means you get too much sleep. Too much that, sleep. that means you're not doing enough action. Right. Sometimes when I don't want to do action, I just sleep. Yeah. And you know, and that's same it's, here. And while I'm sleeping, I'm like, oh my God, why I don't even want to be sleeping right now. Yeah. I want to be action. But you know, we try to find the things to, to create that action. That yeah. Sometimes motivation. sometimes that's the mental health aspect of it. Sometimes it's you know, you might be going through a stint of depression or a stint of anxiety and you don't want to get off the couch, you don't want to get out of bed. You know? Yeah. But um, you gotta rise above it. You gotta get yourself in a clear mental space and you got to put the action and put the work in. Yeah. Get shit done. You know, it's funny. It's like there's levels of, sl- of sleep, you know, I'm a sleeper, yeah. I'm a lazy sleeper mm-hmm. and I'm also a lazy, lazy sleeper. So when they when they when I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping, you can't, you don't bother me. I'm sleeping, but mm-hmm. there's also moments where I'm pretending I'm sleeping just so people don't wake me up yeah, or don't, the, cause I don't really want to bother with them. Cause yeah. that's just, you know, that's the mind frame that I'm in that moment. I, uh, I should probably try that. Yeah. Pretending to sleep. Yeah. People leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. But I mean, but these are the things that we that we have to be aware of. As long as we're aware of that, then I feel like we can grow from that. Yeah. You know, so maybe maybe the next day we can do like I've said it before on the other podcast, we have to find something to be proud of no matter how small it is and just build on it. Like we are all building on something. Like I was proud of myself that I didn't gamble last Tuesday. Yeah. And and I've been able to maintain so you know what I didn't do? I didn't gamble. Yeah. You know, so and I've been able to maintain a level of um, p- positive mental space in this last few weeks, Bobby. Yeah. I mean, before that, bro, the last three weeks before that, I was not feeling good mentally. Right. Yeah. I wasn't waking up. I wasn't, you know, motivated. I wasn't doing the things I w- I'm doing now with the, the Instagram live chats because I didn't even have myself figured out. Yeah. You know, so and man, I'm loving these Instagram live chats. I want to bounce back to that for a yeah, minute because I, I'm absolutely loving it, bro. I'm loving. I'm loving talking all these walks of life. I'm loving that it makes people feel more normal because we are all have different stories. And when you're able to put it on the line like that, it makes you feel a little better. And, and you're in the midst of other people that are also telling their story or also telling their struggles, also yeah. telling what they've overcome to give everybody hope that we can all overcome whatever we're dealing with. You know? Hell yeah. No doubt. Keep it up, man. 
Yeah, what makes you feel? So when's the next one? When's the next live? The next one is, so I have one planned for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, like I said, uh, Wednesday, we're starting it off with Travis. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be good. And we have so many guests, so many great guests, my friend. I can't even get into it. Just, mm. you know, just tune in. Tune in. Uh, this podcast will drop likely to, uh, tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, what physical date is that? What's the actual date? Um, I don't even know. What month I'm not sure. I think it's the 12th today. Okay. Yeah, it's the 12th. All right. So this might come out tomorrow or Wednesday, and then that following evening, um, Kevin will be live on Instagram doing his thing. Yeah, I also might be interviewing um, a Bell another Bellator fighter that is fighting this weekend. Uh, his name is Kyle Crutchmer. Mm -hmm. uh, he's six and zero, nice. and he's going to be fighting uh, in Bellator as well. This uh, I say this weekend, but it's actually Thursday. Yeah, I hope I didn't say. I'm pretty sure I said uh, Thursday in the opening, but it's all Thursday. Good. So Saeed Awad, like I said, he's fighting Thursday. We got Kyle Crutchmer. He's going to be on my Instagram live chat uh, tomorrow. I'm trying to fill in tomorrow's schedule. Uh, like I said, I have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday all booked. Um, so by the time this probably gets out, um, you know, Kyle Kretschmer might have already had his uh, chat. Mm -hmm. But but I want to also bring him on next week on the Most Important Things podcast to oh, talk yeah. about his fight. Let's do it. You know, so I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, tell him that. I did tell him that already this morning through messages. But, um, yeah, we're going to get him on next week as well to talk about the fight. Cool. Yeah. Rock and so, roll. So yeah, man, there's there's so much to talk about, brother. You know, I didn't just uh I wasn't just um I wasn't just doing the Instagram live chats. Man, I, I picked up golf, brother, in the last week. Nice. Yeah, shout out to my band, uh, Eric St. Martin. He's really taught me how to golf in like it only it was only a few short, like little things that yeah. took me from one of the worst golfers to now a guy that plays golf. Probably Pretty simple things too, huh? Oh, simple. Like uh, don't lock your wrists. Yeah. Keep your arms straight and bend the bend the club right here and swing straight. Okay. And man, I got a. So I've been a few times. I went a few weeks ago with my father. I got like a like an eighty. Yeah. Right. And then when I started getting better mentally, like after Tuesday, I think I went like Tuesday or Wednesday, and um, and I didn't lose one ball only because I was in a better mind place. Just because just the fact that I was in a better mind place, I played better. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, the day after though is when Eric taught me the new swing. We went to the the Kate the uh, driving range. Right. Bro, I went from like the scores that I'm that I've played in like I've played about five times since um, I first played three weeks ago. First week, three weeks ago, I got like an eighty, mm -hmm. right? And then my mind was right. I got a sixty six, right? Eric taught me how to play. I got a 61, right? So I shaved off five strokes. And then I went again, and I got a 58. I still don't know what that means, but... Well, the lower the strokes, yeah. the, 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 the better the score. Okay. It's like if you're getting nine hole-in-ones, you're getting a nine on nine gotcha. holes, which isn't which is yeah, impossible. You know, learn something new every day. Sweet. Yeah, we'll have to go golfing. So I'll have to teach Good. you the swing that Eric yeah. St. Mons showed me. Oh, and shout-out to Kyle, the maintenance man at Pine Valley, uh, and all of his UFC friends. Um, you know, he helped me out. I said, where's the hole? He helped me out, and he showed me where the hole was. I said, no doubt. I said, thanks, Kyle. I said, hey, my man. Um, well, I didn't know his name yet. But I said, hey, my man, would you uh, – I'd love it. Uh, I would I would appreciate this why I started a, a, a podcast, The Most Important Things. He's like, oh, yeah. He put out his hand. He's, subscribe. I'm like, bro. I'm like, thank you so much. I'm going to give you a shout out. What's your name? Kyle. All right, Kyle. I'm going to give you a shout out. Kyle, maintenance, uh, the maintenance uh, crew member. Hey. And he said all of his friends are UFC fans, so he's going to hopefully share with them, and we're just going to continue to grow. Yeah, I bro. wish everybody was so open to... You know, hey, check out my podcast because there's so many people that are like, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to check out the podcast and they'll happily oblige right there. And then you got people like a fucking the Instagram comment guy, oh, yeah. you know, when we're trying. So we're trying to reach out. We're trying to reach out to, you know, people that we're interested in on, on having on the show. Yeah. So we're leaving little messages here and there. And some guy starts commenting. This is super cringy. Why don't you put the work in? Why are you being, you know, as we're putting the work, you know, yeah, it's exactly what we're doing. We're putting in the work. He's like, why don't you just DM them? Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, you know what? This guy's being grumpy. Let me see. I'm going to send him a message real quick. I typically really don't nice do message. this. I, tip, I typically don't engage. I just ignore it. But I'm like, all right, let me send him a nice message. Let me just see how he's doing. I've never met this guy before. He's just an Instagram hater. I'm just like, hey, man, I hope you're doing well. Um, I just want to give you my point of view on as to why, you know, we're commenting on everybody's, you know, posts, trying to get people to come on the podcast. A lot of these celebrities don't have, like, wide open DMs. So if we message them, it's going to go into a separate subfolder that nobody's ever going to see. And if commenting on their posts is how we grab their attention, that's that's what we're doing. We're trying yeah. to grab their attention. Yeah. That is us putting in the work. I just sent him a message. Hey, man, I hope you're doing well. If there's anything you need from me, 
please don't hesitate to reach out. So I don't know <laughs> if, he's, if this guy's going to fucking watch this or not, but hope you're doing well. I appreciate your insight. It's uh, funny because I, I actually, uh, like I mentioned uh, before in the podcast, my dad's clearing out his shop. Yeah, so he's cleaning out some windows, and I'm putting them on Facebook, and I'm selling them. So I went to uh, an, a lady's house. And uh, I sold the window to her, and I'm like, "Yeah, hey, let me ask her. She's got a phone or a phone in her hand. Maybe uh, she'll subscribe to my podcast." You know, <laughs> hey, I, uh, I started a podcast called "The Most Important Things." I'd love if you could, you know, if if you have a moment, you could subscribe to it. She was just like, "Yeah, I know about the most important things. I have grandkids. Those are the most important things." Yeah, she's like, not wrong. Okay, yeah, you're not wrong, but yeah. I never said that those most important things my my mom has a grandchild and he's very important to her is very important to me it's mm -hmm. most important to all um but yeah i don't know if she got offended yeah. I was, that's just the name of the podcast where right. what we just discuss what we think is the most important thing no she's probably just trying to be uh trying to be funny you know yeah well she should have been funny enough to subscribe <laughs> well, maybe uh, she is hello yeah, ma'am bethany her name was oh geez yeah Nice but, look. uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, you know, it, it, you know, whatever, you know, it, it, it didn't make me mad. Um, but she bought the window, so that was cool. There you go. You know? And you didn't spend the money on gambling. You know, it's like, I loved her. I loved her. <laughs> <laughs> I loved her as a person until, like, she kind of, like, gave me a reason not to. <laughs> so I, st <laughs> I still loved her, but. Not as much as, you know, if she would have subscribed to my podcast. Hey man, so, I mean, I got nothing but love for everybody. So. Yeah, I got love. You I know? got love. And love and like. There's also like, you know, and there's also like, hate is like way down there. There's like love. There's like levels of levels of levels. <laughs> so you got like love and then you have like, um, like, and then you have like, eh, and then you have like, eh, mm -hmm. disdain, you know? and then you, disdain, and yeah. then you got like hate, you know, yeah. but I feel hate. You shouldn't really hate I try anything. Try not to let anybody get into that category. Yeah. You know, There's even, no point to hate. There should be no hate worldwide. You know? True. Worldwide, uh, you know, atmosphere wide, you know, all wide. Black cloud, uh, what is it? Black hole wide, you know? Yeah. I guess that makes sense. There shouldn't be no hate anywhere, that's Bobby. True. That's that's the whole point of what true. I'm saying. It should be all about the love. And no one wants to talk about love. No one even wants to you don't I don't know. And I was one of those people at one time. I would love. Ugh. What the hell are you talking about? Mm. I'm too badass for love. Man, I love you. If you're watching, I love you because I hope you love me. And I hope that we can watch this with love. You know, it's funny because people think love and people think like in love in like a weird way. Yeah. But we're not in love. In love requires other things. We just live with love, you know? And that's how we're supposed to live. Absolutely. You know, and I think it takes something to get there, though, Bobby. You know, it takes uh, it takes reaching or, or getting out of the, a place that maybe life brought you that you needed to force yourself or work yourself out of to find yeah. that love. Yeah. You know, a lot of um, people have a bad taste in their mouth you know, and they think that it's not that simple that they can just love unconditionally without it having to be a weird thing you know like a lot of people just are negative people because they've been hurt in the past you know yeah well they, others think that love they'll never love right but you i was one of them at one point bobby i wasn't loving nothing mm. i was loving my bed <laughs> i was loving the fact that i got out of work and and went to bed yeah you know that's not healthy brother no it's not healthy no. well you're here now I'm here. You're here. We're all here. We're all here. We're all here on the most important things podcast, episode number seven, from YouTube. Um, so, Bobby, what? Uh, we're also trying to get this on Spotify. Can you yeah. give the audience a look? Because I had a lot of people ask me about Spotify, I Bob, know. and and, and too, I actually man. apologize you know? because I, maybe I should have got on it, but um, yeah, you maybe you should have. I know. I'm just kidding. No, nah, dude. Uh, it's it's a process, but uh, it is coming along. Uh, I'm hoping to have episodes one through seven up on Spotify and iTunes, or not iTunes, Apple Podcast, okay. rather. And then I believe some other distributor as well. I, they're obviously not as popular as Spotify and Apple Podcast, um, but it's going to go up audio only, I believe, by Monday. Ne not this Monday, but next Monday. So whatever physical date that is, uh, maybe I'll put a little picture of it here. Yeah. Yeah, that would be dope. So, but That'd yes, uh, audio version of this podcast will be available on Spotify soon. Very soon. Cool. Yeah. Sounds good. We're making progress. Hell yeah. You know, we are making pr true progress, I feel, Bob. Every day. You know, every day, every episode. You know, every episode we hope to uh, bring more than the next, uh, than the last. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, 
And that's what we want to continue to do and continue to grow with the audience. And that's, I've, I'm tying this back in already, but the Instagram live chats, I want to grow with all those people the same way are growing here on this podcast. And if you are listening, I will get you on schedule for my Instagram live chat. I want to do it every day, brother. Yeah. Uh, every day that I'm not here. Right. You know, and, and uh, yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday's booked. I'm already working on next Wednesday nice. to be booked. Yeah, I've yeah. got a few, uh, few people already then. And um. And like I said, I got Kyle Crutchmer tom- uh, tomorrow, Tuesday. Um, so, yeah, man, we're just out here, you know, filling up the schedule in yeah. my free time. My free time is going to go to what I like doing and giving people the platform and, and just making connections, man. Making that's connections, what you do best, I feel, you know. Yeah. Pretty good at making connections. Yeah. And anybody out here that that's listening, you know, we are all a team. Let's 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 form this team where we are helping each other. You know, we need a. a um, we need like a marketing team, Bobby. You and me are doing a little bit to market, you know, to, and when we say market, that is uh, bring more eyeballs onto what we're doing, bring more yeah. ears to what we are doing, bring more souls, minds, brains, hearts to what we are doing. Yeah. So we're in a day, Bobby, everything costs money. Yeah. You know, so we're building a team out here, you know, and, uh, and we're going to do the best we can to, uh, to further our reach, you know, and really continue to build our, our team out Absolutely. here. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we're never going to stop, brother. We're never going to stop because that's what's most important. You know, the mission is to reach everybody. That's the mission, yeah. which is most important. But the journey is what we must focus on. Yeah. You know, this is this is the journey. This is where our focus is, yeah. you know, and that is enjoying the journey and building the journey uh, and knowing what's most important, which is the mission. But the journey enjoying it i'd argue that the journey is is most important and you know the in the mission and the end result um can change you know it's always changing you know we could set goals and then things can get in the way and then the goals become different goals yeah but the journey itself is the most important part of the whole thing because you're learning every step of the way yeah you know, you know that reminds that reminds me of a song that you do stacy's mom <laughs> check out Stacy's mom journey. on YouTube. Check out Stacy's mom on YouTube. Uh, a good time featuring Bobby AGT and AJ. Listen, I'm gonna tell you why Stacy's mom is a great song, because it's whoever write, wrote the song. I, forget, I don't know his name, but he goes the and um, fountains of Wayne. Yeah, so he's friends with Stacy. Yeah, you know, and he wants Stacy, and then Stacy's mom comes in the picture. And he realizes, what does he say? Oh, Stacy, Stacy, you're not the girl for me. Mm-hmm. Just that's what it was, right? Like you just said. No, he was actually being a sleaze ball, and he was just using Stacy to get to her mom. Oh, really? Yeah, he knew her mom was. Oh, home. he knew from the start. I'm sure he saw her dropping her off to school and shit. Oh. He's like, yo, I need to go over there. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I think okay. he was just trying to use Stacy to. But you might be right. And my innocent self thought he was a good man. That no, just changed dude. his mission. Kid was scum, bro. Really? Yeah, I'm sure he's a good guy. I'm sure he's a good guy. He just wanted Stacey's mom. I know. Well, she's, she's got it going on, so. <laughs> but the way the notes that you hit in that song is unbelievable. I can feel the passion and the emotion. Please, everybody. We might even put a little bit. We, let's put the, yeah, right here. Oh, I'm not the little boy that I used to be. I'm all grown up now, baby, can't you see? Stacey's mom has got it going on. She's all that I want and I've waited for so long. Can't you see? You're just not the girl for me. I know it might be wrong, but I'm in love with Stacy's mom. Stacy's right there, sliding. Stacy's mom. I have to find the raw video of that because I uploaded it five years ago. It's on YouTube. Just screen record. Oh, I can do that. Here. Yeah. Um. So yeah, man. Um. Before we go any further, we have a winner to our giveaway. Here, you hold up one side. I'll hold up the other side. Yes. So our winner was. Gabe Partridge. Gabe Partridge, you have won this shirt, my friend. Please get back to me ASAP so we can get this sent out to you. And, um, and yeah, my friend, you are the winner of the... Thank you for the support, Goodbye. Gabe. Leaving those lovely comments on our YouTube. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching it all. Yep. And, uh, yeah, we'll get this out to you ASAP. Connect with Kevin, and we'll get all those details squared away. All right. Hell, yeah. No doubt, my friend. Um, it's a nice shirt you got on. This is a very nice shirt. Um... We're going to have to cut, though, my friend. Why is that? Because uh, we have Saeed Awad coming on our podcast right now. So, 
is the alarm. All right, without further ado, we have our first guest on the Most Important Things podcast, episode number seven. He is fighting this Thursday, October 15th, the Mohegan Sun at Uncastville, Connecticut, on the main card of Bellator 249. We have Saeed Awad. How's it going, my man? Doing great, doing great. Thank you guys for having me today. Oh, thanks oh, for coming on such yeah. short notice. You know? Yeah, no problem. It worked out perfect. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, man, we just want to we want to dive right into it. So our our podcast is based on mental health, motivation, positivity. So you being a fighter, my man, I know a lot goes into all three of those things. So I mean, before we like dive into the fight this weekend, um, I want you to just kind of what 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 place mentally that you have to get to. Uh, do you have to be to to be a fighter, my man? Like I know you're a fighter in life, but what what makes you the strongest? What what makes you you know who you are to do and be the best person you can be? I mean, I think for uh, for fighting, you have to uh, you definitely have to be mentally strong in and out of the cage. You know, if you if your life's falling apart outside of the cage, there's no way you're gonna be able to go in there and and perform. And it goes the complete opposite, too. I mean, you could have a perfect life outside of the cage and then be one of those dudes that walk in the cage, see the lights and not be mentally there mm -hmm. and just check out during the fight, you know, be the best guy in the gym, but the worst guy, you know, in the ring. So I think uh, the, the mental game of the fight game is huge. And I think it plays a big role in a lot of fighters, whether they're mentally strong or not. And uh, you definitely have to have a clear conscience, you know, and, and obviously train hard, you know, to top it off. But I think the mental part is definitely a huge part of the fight game. Yeah, definitely. So what's life been like for you, um, especially during this pandemic? What's training been like? What's, you know, how, how has things changed from, you know, obviously prior to March, whenever all this, you know, bull stuff started happening? Um, I mean, at first everything got closed down right away. Yeah. So uh, I just, I, I did a lot of like strength conditioning at home. I have a, a little home setup. And then uh, my, my coach kind of opened the back doors for, uh, for all the pros and like the amateurs. So we go in there and get our sparring and still go in there and, uh, work on technique and stuff. So, uh, you know, I took a little bit of time off, but um, for the most part, you know, I've been in there for the past like two camps. I had a camp and I had to pull out of it and I got rescheduled again. So, uh, so I was still able to train. I mean, besides not really being able to do anything because in California I had everything closed, yeah. you know, I just spent more time with my kids and um, still got to train. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's what's up, man. That's most important. Definitely family, you know, so it's, you're, that's a positive that you were able to take out of, you know, all this bull stuff, you know, this bullshit, this, this pandemic yeah. and stuff. So, um, glad you were able to spend some time with your family, man. I want to go, I want to, I want to rewind this like five or six years when I first came across you, my man, you know, you came on the scene, you were knocking dudes out. Uh, I knew you, you came into Bellator. I don't need the exact record, but you were like seven and three or something like that. And, um, I think you, I was seven and four. Seven and four. Okay, see, I knew mm -hmm. it was right around there. Because uh, yeah, I remember yeah. that first fight. I think you fought. Uh, I can't even say his name. De 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 La Renzi. Yeah, De La Renzi, something like that. Yeah, and you knocked him out in the first round. And I was like, who the hell? Who is this guy? You know. And uh, I was super impressed, man. Super impressed with that fight. And then, um, man, and then they put you in there, with Will Brooks. And Will Brooks was like, or did you have one more fight before Will Brooks? Was Will Brooks your second or third fight? I have it was my second fight in Bellator. Second fight. So he comes off a big knockout over uh, De Lorenzi. So they put him in with Will Brooks. At the time, Will Brooks was like 11-0. and 0. Um, Man, I want to ask you about your mindset going into a fight like that when you the expectations are so low on you because no one knows what you are capable of. I knew what you were capable of, but all the all the hype, all the, the attention was on Will Brooks. What was it like? Bring us back to that moment going into that fight. I'll be honest, man, now, any fight, you know, you have, you, you kind of have, you have butterflies and, you know, you go through the motions of, of being overly confident and you go through the motions of being underly confident, but it's all part of the game. You know? Everybody has emotions. So if they say they're, they're not thinking about, you know, everything that could happen, they're, they're lying to you. But um, going in that fight, you know, I knew I was an underdog. I knew, you know, he had the hype behind him, but I felt like, you know, all I got to do is hit him. You know, a lot of people didn't know my fighting style. You know, I didn't really have a big name yet. And I knew I just got to, you know, put my hands on him and, and it's going to work out. And, um, you know, sure enough, it did. But, you know, going into that fight, uh, it was I, I, in my head, I had nothing to lose because I was like, you know, what? all the pressures on him. Right. This dude's coming here to, you know, they have cameras on him. They signed him as like the next best thing, and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, I'm just going to go out there and fight the way I know how to fight. And it's going to, you know, it's going to come my way, hopefully. And sure enough, I landed where I needed to land and, you know, took him out early. Yeah, mm. that's awesome. Yeah, man, that's the one thing that like, uh, like, 
made me a huge fan of you. And, and like today, like you take any fight, like you fight anybody. I remember you fought Cyborg, uh, you know, the male Cyborg at 170 pounds. And he was coming off a big win over Brandon Ward with a knee bar. And, uh, and you came in there and he went for a couple knee bars on you. And like, nah, man, not today, not me. And you just blasted him out, you know. And, uh, man, I remember a triangle that you had on, I can't remember the guy's name, but he had a little. What's his name? He had a little hype. Joe Duarte. On, yes, he had a little hype on himself too, and you just you got him a try. You started blasting with the elbows, and he's just like, dude, you know what? Don't even choke me out. I'm done with these elbows. You know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I had fought, fought him a couple years before that in Strike Force, and uh, we fought on the Diaz versus Daily card. We we're on the undercard, wow. and uh, we, we had like fight of the night. But I, I I went out there and we just went we went ham, man. We beat the crap out of each other. I broke my hand in the first round. Oh. I had him hurt, and then uh, second round came. He went for an arm bar, but he grabbed my hand and it hurt so bad. I just fucking let him have it. And then sure enough, I go to take off my gloves and my bone sticking out of my hand. Oh my God. So I was like, you know what? He he got that one. And then, mm -hmm. you know, they, they asked me to run it back. I was like, perfect. Let's do it. So, you know, thank God it worked in my favor. You know, he dropped me in the beginning, like with one punch. I think I threw a kick and he dropped me and I was able to catch him and uh, try and go and finish him. And I remember going back to the room after and my teammate was fighting, um, before me so i went back there and i saw him he was all like you know taking off his gloves and i was like hey bro i was like you gotta fight he's like i just fought and i was like oh shit i gotta fight and i had my gloves off and my coach was like dude what are you talking about you already fought i was like no no i gotta fight and then they're like i was like shit did i get knocked out and they're like no you won i was like no and they're like yeah you won i was like no fucking way excuse oh, me man. i was like no That's way good. good and sure enough yeah he hit me one time dude and i didn't i didn't remember the whole night wow holy shit wow yeah, I remember he dropped crazy, me put me on my butt Shoof. So I went on autopilot and ended up triangling him. Yeah. Wow. That's unbelievable. I, I did not know that. I can't even imagine yeah, that, what you enough. fighters go through, man. It, like, I just started training boxing and like I got hit like pretty seriously for the first time not too long ago. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> so like the stuff you guys go through, man, I got the utmost respect for you guys. Yeah, you you kind of get used to it. I yeah. Mean, until you, unless you get hit a lot, a lot of times, mm -hmm. it kind of sucks, but you kind of get used to it. Yeah. I'm yeah. paying my dues now. I'm paying my dues. Yeah. Hey, uh, I want to ask you about your upcoming fight this Thursday, man, against Mandel Nalo. I love, I love this fight. I love the the dynamic of you know both you guys at a different point in your careers. Uh, he's coming off his first loss in a, a fight that he came into with a lot of hype, and um, you know he was broken down by by leg kicks, uh, and now he's fighting a grizzled vet in you, man, that brings it with the hands, with with everything, the forward pressure, you know, the ground game. So, I want to ask you, my man. How do you how do you view this fight? I mean, how's everything coming into it? And uh, I don't want to I don't want to ask you if you you know what your game plan is, but I mean, I, you know, I, I can't help to yeah. say that you know he was broken down by those leg kicks. So uh, man, just give us uh, how you're analyzing this fight and, and how you match up with him. I mean, I never really try to uh, try to look at how they lost from one fight. You know, what I mean, usually when someone loses, especially when you lose one fight, you only have one loss. And it's by leg kicks. I'm sure it's something that mentally he's worked on. You know what I mean? So I never look at one thing and say, oh, you know, that guy did it. It's going to work for me. Because in that case, I would have knocked out everybody that has a, a knockout loss in the record. You know, because like, oh, they got knocked out by him. I'm going to knock him out as well. Yeah. So it's not one thing I try to do. You know, so I, I do go out there and I picked apart a bunch of his weaknesses that I, that I noticed, you know, that from his past fights. And um, picked apart, you know, some of the things that I do really well that kind of, are kind of his weaknesses. And, you know, I try to... Uh, drill those a lot and just work on you know a lot of different techniques that he does versus what i do and uh yeah we just got we got a solid game game plan together and i think um you know i should be able to go out there and uh, expose his weaknesses and take it from there there you go um this is probably going to be your first fight since the pandemic right so have you experienced no crowd yet what's what what do you think I about have, that no I, I, yeah I, ha I have not man and uh I think it's good. I think it's good. I think I'll be able to go out there and uh, think more. Yeah. Uh, you know, I won't be, you know, I kind of feed off the crowd a lot of times, you know, as soon as I hurt people, they go nuts. And then I go out there and try to get the finish. And sometimes when you force things, it doesn't happen. Yeah. So I think, you know, this way I won't really feed off the crowd and it could work to my advantage. Yeah. You can mm. zone in really, really kind of just narrow down your vision and, and put the work in. Yeah. I would say don't yeah. let, don't let your corner get too excited if you land a shot, but corners are there to keep you <laughs> uh, grounded anyway. So yeah, true. Yeah, not some of the best corners in the business, and uh, they know me. You know, they've known me for over ten years, so yeah. they know what I do well, what I don't do well. They know exactly how to corner me, so it's, it's going to be good. Right. No doubt, man. No doubt. I want to ask you another question. Uh, you know, you said you fought Joe Duarte uh, in uh, Strike Force, and you know, um, 
now you're fighting with Scott Coker. You know, Scott Coker was the uh, you know the own the uh, president of Strikeforce. How is it fighting in Bellator with you know Scott Coker under the you know the new banner? I know it's been a few fights, but our first time talking. How is it fighting under uh, Scott Coker again? It, it, Scott Coker is awesome, man. He, he he's dope. He's uh, if you text him, he texts you back. You know what I mean? If you see him, you go talk to him. He'll stop. He'll talk to you for as long as you need to talk to him for. Mm-hmm. He's not one of those you know bosses that are too busy for for his fighters. So uh, yeah. You know, and they've always turned me good, man. Like, if I ask for a thing, they usually give it to me. You know what I mean? I, if I, you know, whatever I need, they they, they look out. For, they, they look out, you know. Yeah. And it's uh, Scott Coker and his whole team they have here. So, uh, yeah, I love fighting for him. I think he's an awesome dude. And uh, look what he's doing with the company. Look how big they've grown. Yeah. And uh, it feels like they're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Bellator's definitely put on some big fights. And uh, I'm ecstatic to see them back. I mean, they're back right. We're out of Sturbridge, Massachusetts, so I would be at that fight. We're not even too far away from you right now. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Not too far. Oh man, yeah. So if yeah, there were, I have no crowd. I have uh, friends in New York and family, and they all, you know, they all asked about it, and I was like, Nah, there's no crowd. Like, Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, like, I have yeah. the day off. I was like, Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> I would definitely be there. I actually, uh, I, I requested. Uh, um, a media credential, but they didn't grant it to me. So you might see me at the virtual. Oh. Yeah, you might see me at the virtual uh, media day. It's I believe I got to still look at the details. I've been so busy. Tomorrow, right? Is it tomorrow? I think I have the paper tomorrow, tomorrow. or it's Wednesday tomorrow or, or Wednesday because you got to remember we're fighting Thursday. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. right. So yeah. I think it is Wednesday yeah. actually. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure, my man. <laughs> Don't yeah, miss it. Don't miss it. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, man, that's freaking awesome. Uh, anything else, Bobby? I mean, I appreciate your time, man. Like I said, such a last, such a last minute thing, and we appreciate you coming on with us, taking the time. Yeah, no problem, man. I'll always, you know, thank you guys for for reaching out to me. You know, it's always good to talk to any kind of media, especially being on a little podcast. It's dope. I like your guys' setup. Thank it's you. Nice. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Beautiful studio here. We uh, enjoying it so far. So. Nice, nice. Good for you guys. Yeah, man. We're on episode seven. You know, I'm. We're embarking on a journey the same way you're embark- embarking on a journey of your MMA. You know what I'm saying? And and we're all on different paths and different journeys where we are in our life. And uh, you know, I hope this is the first interview of of so many, my man. Hopefully, man. Hopefully, yeah. I just want to say thank you guys again, and hopefully you guys go to watch a uh, watch it live on TV. Oh, so after will. I get the win, I'll come back and do another one. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent. Win or lose, win or lose. Uh, let's get you back on here. Oh, for sure, man. Thank you. No doubt, brother. We'll be in touch, my Thanks, man. brother. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. All right. You guys take care. You too, man. See have a guys. great day. All right. Bye. So we have another guest on the Most Important Things podcast. Our first episode that we are featuring two separate guests. We had Robert D. Smith with his wife. But now we have a debuting woman's featherweight. She is scheduled to fight at two, uh, UFC 254 on October 24th against Leanna Jojua. We have Miranda Maverick on the Most Important Things podcast. How are you doing, Miranda? I'm doing really good. I'm ready for this fight. Oh, yeah. No doubt. It's a big card, huh? Big opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's huge. I'm really happy about the exposure that I'm going to have out there in Abu Dhabi. It's basically the biggest card of 2020 with a lot of big fights on it. So I'm excited to make my own mark among the greats on that card. Definitely. I I like to think of uh, when Conor fought Khabib and how every fighter prior to the main event ended up going up like 50,000 followers that night, you know, on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So definitely a big opportunity. Excited for you to uh, take and make the most of it. <laughs> let's, not, exactly. let, let's not forget Derek Lewis, the things that he said. You know, <laughs> you don't have to get too crazy like that, Miranda. But <laughs> um, Absolutely. <laughs> but all we got to do is be ourself in life, and uh, and that's what's gonna you know really bring you to exactly where uh, where I feel you can go. You're coming off your uh, you're coming off a win in Invicta over UFC vet Pearl Gonzalez. You are preparing for your debut fight. Like I said, how has training been going? It's been going really well um, since COVID hit. There was a couple of months that the gym was in and out, and I had just private training partners and my coaches. But the last couple months have been pretty much back to normal. We've been careful during the training, of course, and kept the groups a little bit smaller than they were previously. But it's been good training. Even had a couple new training partners show up for this fight camp that are smaller guys and then a couple girls from around the tri-state area that have been helping me train. Nice. That's awesome because, you know, this timing that it happened, I mean, this is your UFC, de- UFC debut, and then it's like you could have never prepared for something like this in a million years. But I'm happy to hear you're adjusting to that. Um, let's talk a little, about, little bit about your fight. Like I said, you're fighting Liana Jojua, uh, a woman's uh, 
flyweight as well that has some UFC experience. So you being, you know, your debuting fighter, but if you look at your resume, you've fought some UFC vets already and you fought a very high level of competition. How do you feel like you match up with Leanna? Um, I think the matchup's really good. Um, honestly, it's a benefit to me. I think in all areas, I'll be stronger than her, the grappling and the striking. Um, but her grappling, I can tell, is where she thinks her strong suit is um, overall. But I think against me, she's going to look to try to do striking more because of my own grappling background. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. You have a very, you have a very aggressive and uh, you know pressuring style, and it's definitely uh, puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. So I, I, I'm excited for the matchup. I'm excited for the matchup. I've seen the last few, last few of your fights. I said this girl's UFC bound, and um, and here you are. You know, here you are about to make your UFC debut, and uh, that's what leads me to my next question. Um, I want to know when preparing for a fight. Um, do you focus more on the opponent you're, you're fighting uh, in your next fight? Or do you, like, where's the balance lay between, you know, being your best fight, being your best self, but also being prepared for the strengths and weaknesses that your fighter brings to the table? I think by focusing on myself, I am able to do that um, and be prepared for any opponents. I don't just walk into a fight camp ready for the opponent I'm facing. I walk in trying to face the world champion. Um, obviously right now that's Valentina Shevchenko. So I'm always training as hard as I can in the striking, striking and grappling, but I like to be prepared as well. You know, they say, you know, it's best to go in there with as many advantages as possible. And so for me, I watch the honest fights. I keep up with the whole division and I try to pick out their strengths and weaknesses and focus on my own as well. Mm. Yeah, definitely having a championship mindset's a good way to go into it. I think, um, how, how are you have you fought yet without a crowd uh, i'm sure that's got to be a weird feeling when going into you know into this octagon and having no no fans around uh do you think absolutely that's gonna, do you think it's gonna um, help you or hurt I you have, oh i haven't ever fought without a crowd like there will be now mm -hmm. but i really don't think it's gonna affect me that much obviously there's the hype and there's the excitement of having the crowd around i enjoy the cheering i enjoy the all of it whether it's booing whether it's cheering it hypes you up yeah. But for me, once I step into the cage, it won't matter anymore. I only listen to my corners and usually their corners too, in case I can counteract. Obviously her corners probably aren't going to be speaking English. Right. So I'll only have two voices too to listen to this time. <laughs> yeah. uh, so for me, I'm just going to block it out and listen to what's being given to me as guidance and focus on the fight. Yeah, definitely listen carefully to the commentators getting a little too excited, you know. <laughs> That's right. Now, I know your main focus is going to be on the fight. You know, the fight is where you make your money. This is what you do for a living. I want to ask you, though, you know, there's so much in my, I'm not even a fighter, but I'm sure there's you get a lot of you see and feel almost a prestige uh, with this fight island thing. Uh, you know, do you feel any kind of certain way towards that, like, you know, being flown out to Abu Dhabi, you know, fighting in this pandemic? Do you do you get wrapped into any of that or do you just focus on the fight? I'm just focusing on the fight. You know, for me, I expected to get to this point. I expected to be in the UFC. So it's not like this huge surprise. It's not like I'm freaking out and fangirling every time we step in anywhere, but at the same time, it's exciting. I'm glad to get this pay raise above all else. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to be able to travel. I've never been outside of the United States, but also COVID kind of puts a damper on all that. You know, we have to be quarantined the whole time we're over there, even after the fight. And in addition, my own father isn't getting to go to the fights and he's always there in my corner. So that's been a little bit upsetting for me. Passport complications happened um, that obviously wouldn't have happened had that been in Las Vegas or something. Well, I'm sure you, you're going to make adjustments on the fly. I'm sure you're still going to be fighting as if he was there, you know, through uh, through his energy, you know, through just everything that he brings to the table when he's at your with your match. So I have no doubt that you're going to make that adjustment. Um Something else I want to talk to you about, Miranda, I talked to, talked to you off camera. I said that, you know, at, we here at the Most Important Things podcast, we try to talk and bring awareness to the most important things we feel in life, which is, uh, in my opinion, and Bobby's opinion as well, um, mental health, motivation, and positivity. Um, I don't know exactly how I want to tie this into a question to you, but I kind of just want to get your thoughts around how important it is uh, to be to have your mental health right, to, to be positive with your own well-being and uh, mental health and your motivation, you know, to be a fighter yeah. and, and what you've overcome in your life to get you to where you're at. Just kind of just want to give you the floor on just 
putting anything out there to the world that relates okay. to any of these topics. I know it's a lot. I go a little crazy. Yeah, it is a lot. I could probably go on all day about yeah. different aspects of it. Um, but for right now, I'll talk about like my mental health currently. Um, my biggest thing is making sure that when I walk into the octagon, my head's on straight and mentioning my dad, he's that person that kind of mentors me into that. I don't need a sports psychologist. He is my sports psychologist, you know? And so we focus on looking at the prize at the end of it all. Um, fighting is just a means to ends. Even though I have these goals within fighting, that's not my life. You know, no matter what happens in that cage, there's other parts of me. There's other aspects of me. I'm not just this athlete. I'm not just fear the Maverick. I'm Miranda Maverick, you know, and I try to bring that with me everywhere I go. I'm also pursuing school right now, pursuing my PhD. I have a lot on my plate. I'm actually going to be late turning in my master's thesis. Um, I won't blame it all on MMA, but I definitely have more priorities going on than most graduate students. Um, and in addition, you know, my age, I just, I'm trying to get everything done in life as quickly as I can so that I can enjoy as much of my life as I can. Yeah. And so that puts a lot of like stress, a lot of strain on me as not only a fighter, but as a person, you know, I, I keep to myself a lot. I don't have much of a social life. I go to the gym, I go to school and I go home and go to sleep, you know, so that that's pretty much it, except for on occasional weekends when I get the chance. But from having that perspective, I'm able to tell people when they're like, oh, what's it like to be a fighter? I want to be a fighter. I want to do all this. And I can inspire people. It's also a warning. You know, I'm like, you've got to take care of yourself first. If you don't have extreme discipline and willpower to keep your mind right first above all things, like I have to be in the right mindset to where if they call me and have a fight and it's on finals week, I just say no. Mm. You know, I have to. There's no oh, I want to do it so bad. Like I can't do that. And so weighing the odds, prioritizing and scheduling things has been really tough. And I've seen a lot of people that don't even fight, but have a lot of other things going on in their lives that it just kind of destroys their mental aspect on life. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing that Miranda, because, um, yeah. you know, life, life, we, we all look at others like they may have it easier than us, you know, because of uh, they see you on TV or they see you uh, fighting and they think that's only you. Like they think like it's like it's like it's like when I see an old person. Right. And they I just think that they're just old. Like, no, that person lived, you know, all those years before that to get to that. So, you know, sharing that, it means a lot. And, and you know, we, we want to try to create a, pro a platform on this podcast to bring awareness to that, bring, a, to bring the, the reality of life that we are all people at the end of the day like you said you're not just fear the maverick you are Miranda Maverick 23 years old human you know out here in life doing your best to survive doing your best to be happy doing your best to stay positive doing your best to motivate yourself uh, the other you know the people around you so you can then stay motivated so I want to I want to say I appreciate you so much for you know sharing everything that you just shared yeah. and also touch on what you had mentioned before about the workers you know working through the the COVID and yeah your thesis oh yeah sure um so I ended up getting furloughed during COVID. I did also work a full-time job there for a while and train and go to school. Um, it ended up being a blessing in disguise that I got laid off from that job. But um, within that, I was like, you know what? Employees are suffering a lot. And my main major, like within my um, education is about employee selection, employee development, training, and employee well-being. And so I decided to go down the well-being path and look at the different demands and resources that employees have that help and hurt them throughout their job and looked at how those had increased during COVID-19 and put all these other extra strains on employees both at home and at their jobs, you know, with all the cleaning procedures, the regulations, the hours that are cut, um, et cetera, and how support and autonomy within their job could help them. Those are the main details I'm working at and how they lead to burnout and work engagement. Wow. Um, so right now that's what my thesis is focused on. Of course, I picked a population that's relative to me. So I reached out to gyms just all across the nation um, that not only I knew, but that I was able to gather contact information for, and then also professional fighters, because technically they usually are employees within their own gym. They usually coach and they are employed as um as fighters you know so i wanted to get that personal aspect thrown into my own research so that i was more connected to it and had more motivation as you say going forward <laughs> leading into that thesis 
Very cool. Wow. I love it. And I love that you just said motivation because, you know, I'm somebody <laughs> that at some times, you know, struggles with motivation as I think maybe some, you know, a lot of people in this world do. So like I said, we want to kind of, you know, we're here telling a story. We're here bringing on people that we also feel have a story. That's why I reached out to you. And uh, we're all out here growing together. Like we're all out here building together. We're all on this planet together. But it's like the people that you run into are like, that's the first day to the rest of your life with them in your life. So I want to say I'm honored and grateful that this is the first day that you were in our life. And uh, I hope that, you know, not only that this is just an interview or whatever it is, I hope it's brought some value to your life that, you know, you can then go share, you know, what you already do in life, which is, you know, motivate and inspire the you know people the way you do with what you do in your life, you know? Well, I appreciate that. And there's like so many points we could talk on. I like the subject of your guys' podcast with the motivation and well-being for everyone. Um, I also wanted to note, you know, like for me, and I know that others have the same aspects, especially within sports or when you're a parent or whatever you have on going on in your life, there's always, you always act different in different parts of your life. You know, I go to work, I'm very professional, I'm very quiet everybody's like, oh, that's Miranda, let's just leave her alone. Like, I'm kind of standoffish, you know, but then in the gym, I'm the most enthusiastic person you've ever met. I'm the, oh. I'm the goofball in the gym, but I'm also the gym enforcer, you know, oh. just because of who I am within the gym. I know what I'm doing. And if somebody's causing problems, I usually try to stop those problems. But then I'm always the funny one too. And then at home, I'm a completely different person. And at school, I'm somebody else. And it makes you almost callous to the rest of humanity, I guess, you know, you yeah. stop feeling empathetic for people. You see the, the fakeness that some people have out there. And for me, it, going back to the motivation part, it makes it hard to do certain things when you see people that are so different than you in their lives. And it's important that you recognize that they're just different mm. and that there's <laughs> not like negativity associated with it. Like for my school, for instance, I'm a PhD student, but I definitely don't have the background of most PhD students. I grew up on a farm right. with a family that wasn't all that rich. Nobody in my family has a college education. And I decided I was going to go and achieve everything I could. And I'm going to school with all these other kids that are actually almost 30 years old or their jobs paying for their degree. Yeah. And they don't have anything else they're having to focus on right now and they're just getting their schoolwork done and then they judge me for not or right. you know I'm just an average student here where I'm used to being the best in in high school and undergraduate and so that's put even more pressure on me so it makes me very thankful for the other people in life and for those who are inspired by me in turn, their inspiration of me inspires me to do better mm, definitely it sounds like our uh, behind the scenes guy has something he wants to chime in on you won't see him, but you'll hear him. <laughs> Hi, Miranda. Uh, my name's Travis. I'm I work behind the scenes here, but I, I just I'm kind of fascinated by you know you listening to you talking about you getting a PhD and so on, um, and and what your PhD, what you're focusing on as far as uh, you know getting your degree. But um, what do you plan to do with it? Like, what do you you know you're heading down this UFC career and also going to school and getting your PhD? How do you how do you see those kind of coming together, or will they at all? Um, I, I do hope they come together. There's so many options within my degree. That's kind of why I chose it. I love psychology. I also love business and focusing on capitalism and helping organizations survive. And the world is getting rougher and rougher every day. Um, mm. So for me, I may go down the road of sports psychology. Mm. You know, I might focus on businesses that are in association with sports. That would be what I ultimately would want to do is consult businesses to make their employees, hence, employ, uh, hence athletes, um, better informed about their jobs, better paid, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but if not, it might be a whole separate road from sports. And once I'm done with MMA, which I hope isn't past the age of 32 or so, I don't want to be getting punched in the head for my whole life. That's mm -hmm. the whole point of having an education is to have a backdrop to fall on. I would like to go into private consulting for businesses and eventually start up my own consulting firm. Mm. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And I was kind of hoping you were going to say that as far as going down the consulting, consulting road. Cause I can mm -hmm. see, I can see a lot of value in that yeah. uh, for organizations, you know, 
Definitely. And, and there's fantastic. the government, there's the federal side, and then there's also the private side. The private sector usually pays better, but the federal usually has a lot more jobs available. So I'll just kind of see where I end up. It'll kind of depend on location. It'll kind of depend on income versus quality of life I want. So mm. we'll see. No, it's great. And, you know, uh, I know a lot of athletes do end up getting their degrees, you know, bachelor's degrees and so on. But it is it is amazing when I hear uh, athletes getting their masters, getting mm. their PhDs and so on, and just really taking it to the next level. Cause that's, there's a lot of value in that for yeah. sure. So that's great. Yeah, thank you. So I want to touch on, it's funny because I looked at Bobby twice. I don't know if he knows why, but you had actually talked about two things that we mentioned on the podcast earlier. You said something about, um, you know, you're a different person in, in one place because of the people around you. Um, and how we worded it earlier was it's almost like we're trying to find the right place where we're supposed to be at all times. So you said like in one aspect of your life, you're like, you are who you are, you're quiet and everything. But then when you feel like you're at the right place, you know, which is the gym, you are, you know, you are, you know, the person that you know you can be, which I, I just, I love the fact that you said that because, you know, we talked about that earlier on the podcast. Yeah. Absolutely. Like for me, it's, you know, family and then places you're comfortable. Everybody does that. When you're comfortable somewhere, you show who your true self is. Uh, sometimes that's not good for some people and other times it is. Um, for me, I feel like anywhere I can show my true values and represent who I am, who I was raised to be and the people around me is the best environment for me to be in. And I try to bring that into the cage as well. You know, I try to represent the values and morals I grew up with every time I step into the cage and how I act outside of it. I see these people that just make fools of themselves and talk crap. And sometimes that's just for the show. Sometimes it helps them make money. And I totally get that aspect, but I'm trying to go with the angle of the persona where I'm a clean, good person. You know, mm -hmm. I want to just be that person who tries to be wholesome in the things I do and just represent really am instead of getting, you know, faded in with the limelight and getting all excited about being pop turning into somebody I'm not. Yeah. Mm. Makes sense. hundred percent. Well, putting the work in, you know, and uh, it's cool. You got so much on your plate and you're still, you know, you've got such a big platform you know, fighting for the UFC. Yeah. Absolutely. hundred percent. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time, Miranda. Um, I hope this is the first of many, um, you know, interviews that we can do together. You know, you're just starting off in the UFC. So I, I look, and just the same way you hope that you have a really successful career in the UFC. And uh, I hope, you know, hope everything goes well this weekend. We will be rooting for you. Well, not this weekend. Oh, I'm sorry. In three weeks. I'm <laughs> sorry. October 24th. Hey. UFC 254. Yes. Khabib versus Gaethje. <laughs> um, but we will be rooting for you. And um, we will. I, I hope we can stay in touch. And uh, this leads to some beautiful things in the future. I hope so, too. Thank you so much for having me. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Have Talk a, to you soon. Have a great day. All right. Thanks. So Bobby, yeah, man. First episode, two guests. Yeah, Saeed Awad fighting this Thursday for Bellator. Mm -hmm. Great conversation with him. Yeah, talk yeah. about his fight. Talk about, you know, the things that he's in. He's, uh, you know, came um, about in his fighting. You know, that's crazy. He, didn't, right. he got punched. He didn't even know he won in the back. That's crazy. That was insane. Um, talked about his mental, what it takes to, you know, be a fighter. Yeah. And Miranda Maverick, you know, she was great too. Definitely. You know, she she talked about her mental aspect and how it affects, you know, everyone around. Uh, Everybody, yeah. you know, and, and it, it's, I love the realness and the authentic authenticity that this podcast brings out Definitely. because Bobby, there are a lot of podcasts or there are a lot of people that ask questions and they just have, they stick to the script. Yeah. They have a few questions they're going to ask, you know, about the fight, about this, about that. But man, we dive in, you yeah. know, like it was really cool for Miranda specifically hearing about her, you know, what she's got going on in school and her degree and what she's trying to chase for a career outside of the UFC. Mm. Yeah. It's really cool, man, because, you know, this is about mental health, positivity, motivation, and we are diehard MMA fans. True. Yeah. You know, so it's like we're bringing everything to the table. Yeah. You know, I'm a diehard acting fan, so we're going to have some actors on the, you know, I'm a diehard music fan. We're going to have some musicians on here. We're going to have everybody that we can grab, Bobby. I'm right yeah, here, bro. You know, yes, I know, I know. I know. Some real musicians. <laughs> you are a real musician. That's what you were saying, obviously. But, um, oh, if you're watching this podcast, what you need to do is you need to send a list of people uh, that you would like to see on the podcast that me and Bobby will work on to bring on here for you to watch. We will grab them for you. We are here to do that. We are here to bring on the people that you want to see. Um, 
I'm already working on a few people. I've already asked my father. I've asked my brother, and uh, and I'm working on some people that your, da- your dad's coming on the podcast. No, no, no. I'm working on the people that uh, they asked, like that they wanted, that they would like to see on the podcast. We should have your dad on the podcast. Yeah, my dad would be cool. He's an OG. Yeah, yeah, we can do that too. Hell yeah. But um, yes, Kevin's right. If you guys want to see anybody specifically, um, give us a shout, and we'll try our best to get in touch. Yeah, no, that's what we're out here doing. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to bring the stars to them. Building connections. Yeah, and that's what we do. Uh, do it again. Building connections. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. that's one thing. Um, you know, Bobby, you know, we out here, bro. We out here on the Most Important Things podcast, episode number seven. You want to be out of here. No, bro. Thinking just... of tacos. <laughs> I'm thinking of tacos. I'm getting hungry uh, again, man. actually. But you know what, Bobby? You know what I like about you? I like that. I can say things to you and you don't get offended, mm. you know, because like that's that's where the relationships lie, you know, um, like the real relationships are are within like the people that you can have in your life that you can joke around with yeah. because words can be said, but excuse me, words can be said, but it's not meant how it's said. It's just more of a joke. And listen, I get annoyed by people that really joke too much and they mm. go like deep and it's just like everything they say is like an insult, but just joking. Those are the people I don't like. But when it's funny. So you don't like me? No, I never said that. Uh. My point is, <laughs> you might have to rewatch the podcast later to see what <laughs> I'm saying. Um, you don't get offended by what I say. I don't. You know, I'm and because you know my, what my intentions are and you know that. You're probably laughing at the joke in itself as well. Mm. Um, my whole point is, Bobby, is they say that actions speak louder than words. You know, so my actions are what's louder than my pointless words. And you know what actions also speak louder than? Mm. Thoughts. You know, so it's like these are my thoughts, but my action and my thoughts trans- transition to my words. But the words don't transition to the actions. There are more words said in this life that do not transition to actions. And... Um, that's only because of jokes like Bobby, I'm going to slap you or something like don't don't you know what I'm saying? Like stupid stuff like that. I'd really like to see you try. Oh, shoot. The most important things podcast just took a crazy turn. This is officially the last episode. <laughs> uh, ah, nah, just man. kidding. I try my best not to get offended. You know, and I hope I haven't offended you today. Uh, we were talking about seasonal depression earlier. I was in a little bit of a mood when we got here off camera. And I think Kevin picked up on it almost immediately. Almost. You know, and it's just me being a little pussy, you know, I'm just. Well, you know, this is actually Miranda had mentioned two things on the podcast that um, that she said. And I looked at you twice. The first thing I mentioned and the second one I didn't mention. But the second one was exactly what you just said. Uh, I feel like when I'm around people that aren't at their best, I feel like it's my fault because I feel like I can do something for them to help them. Mm-hmm. Um but in reality, like Miranda just said, that's just how people are. Yeah. You have to accept them who, how and who they are. You can try your best to you know, help them in any way to make them have a better day or a great day. Um, but sometimes people just, we're all dealing with our own problems. Yeah. You yeah. know? We're here to learn and grow through it all, man. Together. Happy to be here with you. Happy to be with you always, brother. Do you have anything else to talk about, man? Because uh, I feel like it's been a pretty adventurous day. It has been a very adventurous day. Um, a lot, I, a lot I, of ups I'm, and downs. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are a few more things I would like to talk about, but uh, you know, we can we can we can talk about it on the next week's podcast if you'd like, Bobby. We can talk about it right now. I don't know why you're okay. trying to kick me out of here. Oh, now now I'm the one kicking him out. I don't know what he's saying, bro. Unbelievable. I mean, we got here at eleven o'clock. It's five o'clock. Five o'clock. I hear you, man. So you're getting tired. You already ate, so you're not. I'm not tired, hangry. bro. Fucking chat away, bro. I'm here. I'm right here. Okay. Okay. Oh. Well, you're physically here. You're mentally here. Always. All right. That's what I'm trying to do. You know, I'm trying to help you, brother. Just like the way I'm, I want to help you as much as you help me because you helped me. So it would be an insult to myself if I couldn't help you the way you helped me. Let me help you. Help, help me. Help you. Help, help you. Help me. Help you. Help me. Help you. So then you can then help me. So then we are helping each other, and we are bringing whatever we can to the world. But. What I think will help the audience is that we don't bore the crap out of them on all this bullshit. We provided two great interviews with two great people. We are here on the Most Important Things podcast. We want to bring as many people onto the podcast as we can. Also bring, um, you know, what we have to say on the week. Uh, hey, Bobby, I bought a karaoke machine. Nice. Yeah, I went to a, um, I went to a yard sale. Shout out to uh, Nelson. Um, I'm, I won't say his, the street name. That'd be crazy. 
kind of crazy. But um, yeah, he was having a yard sale, and nice. I went there, and uh, we worked it out, you know. And I was, or, that's it. Now I got a uh, fucking love karaoke. What are you gonna do with this karaoke machine? You gonna uh, do karaoke? Uh not necessarily karaoke, yeah. but like just practice being on a mic because yeah. I just have this, I just have this feeling, uh, Bobby, that this mic is is gonna be my life. Yeah, you know. It was something I envisioned last year with the mic, with the 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 camp, the um the flapper board, yeah. And uh, you know, a lot of people thought maybe it was a joke at that time. And um, you know, what is he doing? Mm-hmm. You know, why does he have these props? You know, this kid's a fool. Well, you know what, Bobby? Over time, I'm starting to realize that things grow. You know, they just grow. They manifest into reality. The more you're willing to, you know, put into it. And Bobby, I think was was starting to put a, you know a lot of serious things into it. You know, we're here growing. People are seeing us grow. People are seeing us do new things. Instagram live chat, bringing on everybody. Most important things, podcast, bringing on guests. It's just you know. Bobby, we're just going to continue to grow, you know, and this is lucky number seven. Mm-hmm. This is lucky number seven and most important things podcast episode number seven. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. And I'm just happy to just keep continuing to grow. Um, and uh, yeah, man, until next week, you know, until next week, I think we've covered everything. And you know what, Bobby? What's that? Do you have any closing words? Um, I just want to say that I'm grateful that we get to do this week after week, even when it seems as if I'm in a bad mood. I'm very happy to be here with you. Very happy to be here with Travis. Very happy to be here in this beautiful room. I'm very happy to continue to provide whatever it is we're providing week after week to hopefully somebody out there can get a little bit of this and, you know, do something with it. You know, maybe better their lives, improve their lives. So I just look forward to doing it again soon, and I'm happy to be here with you. Next week, brother. Next week? Next week. All right. Um, See if I'm available. Yeah, I hope you're available. So uh, I'm going to end it with a little bit of uh, just something that's been on my mind lately, Bob. You know, I'm always wondering if, uh, if uh, will I be the one that dies? Will I be the one that cries? Will I wear a disguise? No, I will choose to rise. America's got talent. Here I come. It wasn't 2020, but 2021. I'm going to show the world just who I am. I've been knocked down before, but here I stand. But it don't make a difference. We just build strength because all that falling is all past tense. But the best part is always getting up because pain is scary, but it's only temporary. Let all the setbacks shoot you forward like a slingshot, a catapult to bring you toward your dreams, your passions, and everything you're good at. Like college baseball to the pros. Now you swinging with a wood bat. But keep swinging. We all out here swinging. We all out here bringing it. Sometimes we all out here winging it. Because we all butterflies. Busting out our cocoons. I hope everyone has a great day today. And I will talk to you soon. That was fucking fire, bro. Jumping, the water's fine, it's a celebration No, we ain't stressing cause we on vacation Not a care in the world today, baby